Good morning there. Now, if you're wondering why I'm whispering, it's because I'm crouched down low here in front of a tree, and I've got these gawas right in my frame, and they've been so entertaining, and I've been snapping away for the past 10, 15 minutes or so. Now, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a little bit now, you'll know that this is not my usual landscape photography video. But uh, I've just been awfully busy the last few weeks and I haven't had a chance to uh, get out and go far to find some interesting landscape locations. So rather than not uh, head out for any photography whatsoever, I thought it'd be nice just to go down to this uh, local woodland area that's quite well known for lots of uh, bird life here and try my hand at some bird and nature photography. This beautiful gala was more than happy to give me the practice I needed, giving me endless opportunities to snap away. Here he was busy attacking the bark on this tree. Apparently galahs do this to their nesting trees for various reasons, including to deter predators, clean and sharpen their bills and territorial marking. I realised then how much I prefer action and behavioural bird photos than resting bird on a stick images. Unfortunately, I had to cut my bird photography shoot short this morning. Um, after I took those photos of the uh, Major Mitchell's galahs that you saw just earlier, there was a flock of parrots that flew in to my right and they were quite close to me and I was quite excited to uh, switch over and try, and try to grab some images of them. And, in my haste, I uh, lifted up my tripod and swung it around and I'd forgotten that my camera wasn't secured into my tripod. I'd actually just left it resting quite loosely so I could pick it up and, you know, shoot freehand quite quickly. So anyway, swinging it around, uh, my camera fell off the tripod and it landed uh, front on uh, lens first into the ground and it was only about a meter or so off the ground so um, I, I didn't expect it to be much damage if any at all but um, I was quite devastated when I picked it up and uh, saw that the glass was just smashed in um, and so you know with my lens smashed in obviously I don't have another long lens on me uh, and, and I'm just not able to take any more bird photos this morning. So I'll just uh, show you here. As you can see, that's actually quite smashed in. Um, I'm not sure if that's uh, reparable or not, but um, I'll know soon enough. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> not much else I can do without a working long lens for the rest of this video. Um, lucky though, I do have insurance, so I highly recommend photographers out there, particularly if you're clumsy like myself, uh, you definitely need insurance because uh, gear is expensive. Uh, it's precious and uh, as far as possible you want to have peace of mind when you're out there in the field. Anyway, my video today was going to be about um, whether you can take great uh, wildlife photos with average gear. I was fortunate enough to have uh, captured some photos early this morning before I started filming and I'll show them to you now and 
uh, you can let me know your thoughts on uh, the quality of the photos. I managed to capture this cheeky sulfur crested cockatoo earlier that morning just as he decided to leap from the perch where he'd been curiously watching me trying to sneak around down below. He gave me a fantastic sequence of poses on the way down and these were some of my favourite images from that morning. So what gear do you need exactly for uh, decent or great wildlife photography? Now I'm sure opinions out there will vary but I think most people would say you definitely need a camera body with reliable and fast autofocus um, and uh, a high burst rate or frames per second um, shooting and buffer rate as well. And in terms of the lens, uh, obviously uh, longest is best and also you do need a lens that is um, very fast and very sharp. Now, if you've been watching my photography channel uh, for a little bit, you'll know that uh, I shoot with a Fujifilm X-T4. And this is a great little hybrid camera, which uh, I love for a lot of reasons. But one thing that I don't like about it, and this is uh, no secret here, is that autofocus on Fujifilm cameras aren't the best. In terms of burst rate, I can shoot at uh, 15 frames per second, mechanical shutter, and up to 20 frames per second on um, electronic shutter, and that's at full resolution, so without cropping. So again, it's it's not the fastest out there, but uh, certainly not a slouch either. So I think fair to say uh, this X-T4 is, is average for uh, wildlife photography. And similarly, my lens as well. This is my 70 to 300. So crop sensor, that's a full frame equivalent of about 450 mil at the long end. It's an F4 to 5.6. So not the fastest lens out there, but definitely not the slowest either. And in terms of sharpness, I think it's got pretty good sharpness throughout its focal length. It does get quite soft at the edges and of course towards the 300 mil end, but overall um, sharpness is pretty good on this. So this uh, mounted onto my X-T4, I think is a pretty average um, setup for wildlife photography. Happy to hear your thoughts uh, otherwise. Here are a few more bird in flight images I captured that morning. Now, they may not be the best compositions, but that was far from the point. I was lucky to see so many active birds, including this black or white whistling kite and his little friend. If only I had a longer lens. So I've had a chance to review my photos in detail and I thought it'd be helpful to share some of my observations about some of the key concerns I had about my average setup not being good enough. Now I should stress that this is not intended to be a highly technical or scientific review, uh, rather it's just based on my limited experience while I was out in the field the other day. Uh, so my first key observation relates to the autofocus performance and knowing that the, the autofocus isn't that great on the X-T4 I made sure that I took a lot of shots and by a lot of shots I mean I took between 1200 to 1300 photos during the short time that I was out there uh, and my observation is that my rate of keepers was roughly about 30% to 60%. Now the rate was higher for photos of stationary birds than they were for uh, birds in flight. And I guess no surprises here. I did find that I uh, did lose uh, focus uh, often. And I think what also made it quite challenging was the fact that there uh, is no subject or bird auto detect on the X-T4. Uh, and that probably was compounded by the fact that um, I am still very inexperienced in my bird photography. My panning skills uh, need quite a lot of work. And I also set myself a really difficult task of taking photos of birds in flight. So my second key observation relates to noise. Now shooting at some really high shutter speeds, I think there were times I was shooting at one four thousandth of a second. Uh, I was terrified of the noise that I'd get in my images. And some of my photos were incredibly noisy. So I'll 
just show you a quick example uh, just to give you a sense of the noise that I had to work with. This is one of many sulfur crested cockatoos I captured. Now this is a raw image that was captured at one four thousandth of a second and the light wasn't great. So my ISO is pretty high at 6400. I'll zoom in to 300% so you can see the noise on your screens. Now I don't usually pixel peep in at this level. You can see it's terribly noisy and this image would otherwise be unusable. But look at the amazing result I was able to achieve using DxO Pure Raw 2. Same amazing result here. This is a superb fairy wren that I was able to capture just momentarily. He was so skittish and just wouldn't stand still. He was in really dense bush here and the light was uh, really quite poor. At ISO 6400 the noise here is quite bad but using DxO Pure Raw 2 you can see what an incredible job the software has done to reduce the noise. Now of course there are a number of software programs out there that can yield similar fantastic results. Topaz Denoise is popular and so too is On One No Noise AI. So if noise is a concern for you as it is for me, I would highly recommend you look into these software programs that can reduce noise. My third observation relates to resolution and cropping. And I think most often you will need to crop and crop in by a fair amount, particularly if your subject is small, such as small birds, and if you're uh, lacking that focal length. Now I'm working with a 26 megapixel camera and I was fortunate enough to have been able to get pretty close to the birds uh, on the day that I was shooting. Um, but there were times when I found that uh, I was much further than what I'd like to be and I was wishing that I had that extra reach. And I'll show you an example just to illustrate what cropping in can do to uh, the resolution in your image. Back to my superb fairy wren. Now I know this is far from a great composition and it is soft, but the point here is that it was captured at my maximum focal length of 300 mil. And when cropped in to get the bird to a size that's reasonably large to view, that works out to be about an 85% crop. So from a 17 megabyte file, I ended up with only a 2.4 megabyte file. Now contrast that with my favorite galah, a much bigger subject. So here I was zoomed in at 278 mil, so almost at my maximum focal length, and I only needed to crop in at about 35%, producing a 10.7 megabyte file from an original 16.6 .6 megabyte file. I think you can get away with a small print with this resolution. So in summary, my view is yes, you can definitely take some great wildlife and bird photos without expensive and high-end gear. But I think what that means is that you just need to work a little bit harder in uh, doing things such as making sure that you're nailing your focus, that you're tracking your subject and getting closer to it, uh, and that you're probably needing to be a little bit more patient. So spending a bit more time out in the field, taking more photos than what you otherwise would need to, just to make sure that you do get that shot at the right time. But I think as is the case with uh, photography generally, there's more to a great image than simply uh, sharpness and resolution. Uh, and I think unless you're a pro or you're taking every photo with the uh, aim that it's going to be a contender for Nat Geo Photo of the Year, then you shouldn't be deterred in going out there and trying wildlife photography um, just because of the perception that you don't have the camera bodies or the lenses that you think you need to meet the uh, demands of the genre. So I think you can certainly still get some really good photos uh, with less than high-end gear. And in any case, uh, just being out there in nature and enjoying the company of uh, the animals is a great thing. I certainly enjoy that. If this is something you'd like to see more of, whether it's taking more wildlife or bird photos or somehow combining that with my landscape photography, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if this video is a type of content that you do enjoy watching, please also consider hitting that like button and also subscribing. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, take it easy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.